my God. Can you explain again what you just, uh, said at the beginning about this specific area? Which area is it? Uh, actually, uh, this area is called Korean Demilitarized Zone, and it's a buffer zone uh, between two Koreas, and um, it has been restricted from human access for about 70 years. Wow. Yeah, but unlike its name, actually, it has become a um, uh, weaponized border uh, due to you know frequent military provocations. Um, yeah, but actually DMZ is a home of violence, but nevertheless South Korean society tried to promote this area as unexpected uh, natural paradise, not, you know, like considering the reality of the violence. But I think they are manipulated uh, under the fantasy about untouched nature. So, okay. yeah, because political violence occupying the DMZ not only threatens humans, but also affects other living beings in the DMZ. But how did the DMZ become a habitat for various biodiversity? And I think they have adapted to and they have settled down to this violence for 70 years. So they rather need this violence. Because so without this violence, the current ecological environment will be destabilized and will have different characteristics. So violence, uh, Violence affects to these uh, living beings in DMZ in very positive way, I think. But also, some animals uh, got damaged by landmines, like wild boars often got damaged from landmines. Oh. Also, eagles. Some, but some otherwise some species um, really doesn't care. Like, for example, some little bird for li little birds like landmine is nothing. It's like, oh. and, uh, um, I'm really into, because I'm studying abroad, and I really want to introduce my cultural history, especially about, you know, division uh, history. And also at the same time, I'm really into uh, the notion of nature. So I really try to integrate them together, and, and yeah, I, I could come up with this place. So the, the land in the... Uh those structures, where, where did you take this land from? Is uh, it that, that one? yeah? Um, uh, because I try to use the you know cultural troops of natural history museum, such as diorama and illustration, because um, the place I'm dealing with is owned by the absence of humans, but type of natural history museum always requires a close observation of humans. And I think this contrast makes viewers to uh, question what is the our perspective, our you know perspective. And so these are um, endemic species that I created uh, from my imagination. Illustrations also were drawn by me, and scenarios also created by me. And, but I'm trying to do some possible imagination, try to blur the. Yeah, to learn what is the reality and what is the fiction. Because um, this place is a real place, but at the same time, it can only exist as a fiction. Because we That's cannot true. get there. So even though these pieces are created by me, but no one can be sure that they really don't exist there.